Um, okay, so uh, some some of the next things that I'd like to emphasize here as we're as we're uh, working here on our desktop and getting a little bit more familiar with the command line um, will be uh, 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 what if I want to start making some stuff for myself. So we, we've just sort of been exploring the file system and exploring some of these base commands like CD and PWD and LS and getting used to what an argument might look like. Okay, fine. Um, well, what if I want to make my own stuff, right? What if I want to start making my own folders? And so I think this is kind of a good activity to start. Let's see if I can make some of my own folders and I want to make them right here on the desktop. All right. So a command in order to make your own folder is the MKDIR command, make directory. All right, so MKDIR, and this is a command that expects at least one argument. It expects you to say, what's the name of the folder that you want to make? It's like, okay, fine, so I'll do MKDIR space. And uh, I always like to start out by doing ones that are like your first name and your last name. So maybe you'll make one that's your first name, maybe you'll make one that's your last name, and that would be a good place to start. So now what, what the argument that it expects is, what's the new file path that you'd like to create? And so I could just go and type it out and say, well, I just want, I just want a James folder. Right, there is no James folder here. That's what I'm trying to create. So I could do an MKDIR of James. Right, and as I do that, it's like, okay, did it work? Well, I can kind of cheat and use the GUI and see that the a little James folder just popped up over here. But yeah, I could, I could confirm that with the ls command. Right, if I type ls, it's like, great. Now I've got a James folder here on my desktop. Um, another way, of course, that you can do it is by typing out the full file path. All right, and so by typing out the full file path, that would allow you to make a directory anywhere on the computer from anywhere. All right, so when you just type out MKDIR space and then type a name, that makes it here. All right, so let's see what I'm talking about. If I do MKDIR space and now type out the full file path of where I want to create what I'm trying to create, right? I want to make I want to make one that's my last name. So, but this time I'll do the full file path. So I can say something like slash home, slash sandbox, slash desktop. And now this time I'm making one called rice. All right, so I'm going to have a James folder and I'm going to have a rice folder. But you notice the difference here. I just typed the name as opposed to typing the full file path. All right, now it made a folder here in the same location, right? I can confirm it with an LS. I kind of see it there with the GUI. It's like, great, now I've got two folders. But the big difference I'm emphasizing with this is if you understand this notation by typing out the full file path, again, this, this becomes really powerful because you can now reference anywhere on the computer. This is not really something you can do with the GUI. Right, with a GUI, you have to go to the location and make the folder there. When you're working at the command line, you can just list any file path and make stuff anywhere on the computer from anywhere. And that's something that's quite a bit different. And so I want to take a step back here to understand a lot of what's happening here with our file paths. And so I made a, a quick little reference just for us to understand what's happening. And so when you're working with command lines, especially with file paths, it's really critical. I find this a, is a common question that new people are always asking me. What do, do, when I write my file path, do I have to start with a slash or not? And what that really shows is you don't understand the difference between an absolute reference and a relative reference. All right, so the absolute reference is what I would kind of call the full file path. We're going to type the full name of what it is that we're trying to create. And absolute references start with the slash. It's saying start at the top of the file system and tell exactly where something is. So they show an example here, like if you wanted to make a resume document, I would type the full file path of slash home, slash sandbox, slash documents, slash resume.txt. Now, as, as I mentioned, like this is a bit longer. Lots of times people do not use use absolute references because you got to type out everything right you got to type out the slash the home the sam like all that stuff and so sometimes people don't write the absolute references what we do is we write what's called a relative reference and the relative reference is still a reference but it assumes wor that we're working in your current working directory the file path starts from where you are Ah, so now it becomes really critical to know where are you in the file system because that's where the file path starts from. All right, so relative references do not start with the slash. All right, when I made that James folder, I didn't say slash James. That's a different location. Slash James is different than the James location when I'm on my desktop. So understanding, do I start with a slash? Do I not start with a slash? That's really critical when you're using some of these initial commands. And again, here's another example where I say, well, how about just documents slash resume.txt? And it didn't start with slash documents, right? And so this assumes you're already in your home directory, slash home slash sandbox. All right, so that, that reference would work, but it only works from one location on the computer. You would have to be in slash home slash sandbox for that location to work. The reason why we use relative references is because they're shorter. 
right? I can just type out based on where I already am. Now I only have to type out the rest. But that won't work from anywhere on the computer. And so I've seen this a lot where you'll run the command successfully from one place. You then CD over to some other location on the computer, do some other work elsewhere. And now you try to run that same previous command again. But if you didn't use absolute references, that same command had some relative references. You're in a different location now. The command doesn't do what you thought it did. Or maybe just the command fails entirely. So, yeah, when in doubt, I oftentimes say, let, let's use the absolute reference. But, uh, you know, if, when you're comfortable and you know what you're doing, you know, using relative references is fine. Um, for a lot of the activities, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to use both. I'm going to try to do both relative references and absolute references just to break the ice on it. So you can become comfortable doing either. There isn't really an entirely right or wrong, but you just, you got to be comfortable doing both. All right. So I made this first one with a relative reference. It assumed I was already on the desktop because I made a directory and I didn't start with slash. Whereas this one, I said, nope, we're doing the absolute reference. We started with slash and I listed out everything. And that, that's how we got to making these different directories. So it's like, okay, fine. Um, how do I check to see what's inside them? Is there anything inside these folders? I just made the folders, right? I could cheat and look with the GUI, just double click like, yeah, okay, it's a new blank folder. But how could I confirm that with the command line? Right? If I, if I was at my desktop and I do an LS and I see I've got this James folder and this Rice folder, how do I confirm what's actually inside them? And what I want to emphasize with this is you don't have to go into a directory to see what's inside it. That's a very, very common thing that people will do is they'll navigate into the directory and then look to see what's inside it. It's not like that's wrong. I'm just emphasizing you don't have to. You can look at what's inside any directory on the computer just if you know the file path. All right, and that, that's of course, we could do that with the ls command. So ls, we oftentimes run with no arguments and it will look at your current directory. Well, what if I pass it an argument? You could pass ls a file path. And so if I pass, let's say, the relative file path of the James folder, I could say ls of James, right? We'll hit tab to just auto-complete it. It's like ls of James will show me, well, there was nothing, right? So if you ever type a command and it just jumps right back there to the terminal, it doesn't mean the command failed. It could be the command ran successfully and there just there were no results, all right? So the James folder existed. We looked inside it and there was nothing. So that's one way that I could reference this. And just like before, I could also look inside something by giving the full file path. So I could say something like ls of slash home slash sandbox slash desktop slash James, right? That, that, that ends up having the same effect of trying to look inside this, this James folder. But I gave the absolute reference that time. So, big difference, big difference between our absolute references and our relative references, and it becomes very powerful once you understand how to do this. Because now, as I mentioned, like, I could look in any folder on the computer from anywhere. Not really something you can do with the GUI. You can't look anywhere with just one command. Usually you have to kind of navigate over there. But with your ls command, understanding absolute references, you could look anywhere on the computer at any time. Um, we could also uh, kind of combine this with tilde, right? We saw the tilde notation earlier, so maybe I'll look inside the rice folder, but this time I'll use tilde. I could say ls of tilde slash desktop slash rice. Right? And again, using tab to help auto-complete things. And it's like, yeah, they're both empty folders right now. But nevertheless, it's we're, we're trying to become familiar with the different ways we can reference stuff here on the computer and, 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 and do it with basic commands.